To quickly go through some of the hand positions, I wanted to show you some sign language, some motions that we do, and other things that'll just help you with the hand motions of baton twirling. Some things I'll mention throughout the course and things that you'll hear me say. So first, um, we're gonna go through about four letters of sign language, the first one being A. So this is a sign language letter A. Then we have a sign language letter F. So that's where you put your fingers together and you put it your other fingers up like this. Sometimes I do that, it's kind of like the okay um, signal, but sometimes we'll hold our baton in these fingers right here. So I don't mention it that much, but just so you kind of have a reference point. Um, o is this, so um, O, just making that O, if you kind of think binoculars, you can tell I teach children because everything I can kind of relate to things that they have done. And then the last one for sign language that we'll do is S. So S is where the thumb is on the outside of the fingers. We never wanna do this. I can't think of one situation in baton twirling where we actually wrap our fingers around our thumb. So always make sure that thumb is on the outside. It just curls down and it comes out. So other side too, you can kind of see. And I'm doing this with both hands just so you don't need two different videos to show. Um, the next one, I call it sock puppet or cheeseburger. I always pretend like if you're eating a cheeseburger, you kind of have your hands like this, also like a sock puppet. Um, so I yell this at my students all the time, even my older ones. Um, it kind of makes them laugh and it just makes it a little bit uh, more friendly and funny to say cheeseburger instead of free hand, free hand, free hand. Um, so we always do our hand out like this. So it's kind of like an L, you can kind of see that L position, whichever way we go. Um, this is also used for our hips. You'll hear us say things like broken wrists. And so if your wrist goes down like this, that means it's broken. So we usually try to aim for a straight wrist based on everything we do, even when we're holding our hands on our hips. Um, next, I like to do this one when I'm teaching thumb tosses or thumb rolls. Um, also two hand passes. Um, I also call that chop down the cherry tree. We'll go over that. But um, I call it, can I have some candy or may I have some candy? You put your hands out like this and you grab it. Um, so we do, uh, may I have something? and grab it um so based on how you teach some people will teach certain things and they say pretend like you have an object in your hand so that is what i mean when i say can i have some candy or may i have some candy um, and then you can also say give the candy back you can also um, roll it back out to the person uh, next super simple thumbs up and thumbs down. You can also do thumbs to the side and thumbs to the other side. There are times when we do it very different ways. And so little kids really understand if you say thumbs up and thumbs down, they don't have to think about it. They just move their hand down. They know what a thumbs up is. They know what a thumbs down is. So um, keep that in mind when we are doing things. And I'll tell you thumb towards um, the big end or little end, something like that. Um, lastly, we have, this is more of a cheerleading thing, is cinnamon rolls. And so when we do cinnamon rolls, you can kind of see it here. Um, I've heard some cheerleaders call it donuts, but I like cinnamon rolls because it looks like the big cinnamon roll and the little cinnamon roll. And so when we're doing hand positions, you can see big cinnamon rolls towards you or little cinnamon rolls towards you. And then I asked them, um, you know, this kind of feels a little awkward. So depending on which way you go, if I tried to turn it this way, I'd look a little funny. So try to tell them little cinnamon rolls towards me or big cinnamon rolls towards me. Those are just a few hand positions that I use for baton twirling and how I kind of relate it to um, real life things. So if you have any questions, if you actually have any other suggestions or tips that you use, I know a lot of coaches have great things that I learned from. So feel free to put those down in the comments. I'd really like to know.